pride, oven pride, oven pride, love and pride, love and pride. That was a song in the 80s, I think. I say. Hello, chaps. Um, I hope you're well. It's uh, it's pretty unpleasant here in Gloucestershire uh, this evening. Um, I've just dropped my fiance off at the railway station, and it's um, it's coming down in stair rods, um, as our friend Paddington Bear would say. Anyway, um, today is Sunday, and uh, tomorrow I have the morning off, which means that I'm able to carry out a task which I've been putting off all week. Uh, and to help with that rather laborious task, uh, we have bought a product that uh, apparently. Uh, makes it a lot easier. So um, today I am going to be, wait for it, drum roll, cleaning the oven. So here is the product that we uh, have bought to help with cleaning the oven. It's called Oven Pride. Um, I have seen it on the shelves before but um, I've never bought it, um, probably because I've never bothered to clean the oven before. But um, uh, we'll see how it uh, how it works. Um, it does say on the back here that uh, our Oven Pride two-in-one system uh, transforms racks and grills and tackles the inside of the oven. Um, so uh, yes, when it says two-in-one system, it means it does the the racks and and the oven. Um, the fume-free formula is easy to use and will leave your oven sparkling clean with amazing results every time. Um, it's also perfect for use on the barbecue too. Uh, which is very helpful if you live in England, where we have, you know, half a barbecue a year. Um, it says uh, unbeatable results, no scrubbing required, which is good. Um, it's uh, it's approved uh, in 2016 by the Good Housekeeping Institute. Um, so hopefully it's approved in 2017 as well. Um, there's all sorts of warnings on the side with lots of danger, dangerous things. Don't put it on a shelf. Don't get it on your hands. Don't eat it. Don't mix it with other shit, um, don't get it in your eyes, if you're wearing a plaster, I don't know, don't use it, um, don't, I think that means don't decant it into another bottle, that's something else, and then it says about having the window open, um, which is strange really, because it just uh, boasted being fume free, so I don't know why the window would need to be open if it's fume free, but there we go, um, la da la da, lots of poisonous things on here, lots of warning labels, um, for something that's fume free. Um, it uh, basically it contains a, a bag, a bottle and some gloves um, and uh, like I say I, I think the I think the idea is that you um, you put a bit of the gubbins that's in the bottle in a bag, put the racks in, slosh it about a bit, leave it overnight um, and then the rest of the uh, the uh, witchcraft solution that's in the bottle you just chuck in the oven um, and you, you sort of you know uh, agitate it a bit and then um, and then leave that as well and then when you come down in the morning it's all sparkly and clean um, so uh, uh, although there might be a bit of work to do in the morning sort of wiping it out so um, uh, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll see how that goes but um, what we'll do is we will um, open this up see what's inside and um, crack on okay chap so you join me down here on the uh, on the floor I've set the uh, camera up into uh, oven load, uh, which actually turned out to be quite difficult. Um, so uh, here's my oven and um, here's our box of bits. So um, I'm going to open it up and see what's inside. Um, so another big danger symbol, if you can see that uh, on the top there. Uh, it says here, corrosive liquid causes severe skin burns and eye damage. Keep out the reach of children, wear protective gloves, protective clothing, eye protection and face protection. Um, which is quite difficult given that they only supply a pair of gloves, but um, I'm not entirely sure what face protection is. Um, maybe they should supply a balaclava or something like that. But um, anyway, we'll just dive in. You know, if I burn my hand off or something, I'll just go to the hospital. Um, so here we have the bottle with the same kind of um, uh, information on that the, the box has. Um, we've got um, what I, yeah, our bag um, for the racks. Um, and another big warning label. It really goes down with the warnings, just so that um, you know if you do manage to, you know, burn yourself with corrosive liquid, then uh, it's not really their fault because uh, they just ram it into your face every ten minutes. Um, 
It says, do wear gloves and keep arms fully covered at all times. With a, you know, 20% cashmere sweater from Marks and Spencer, but uh, there we go. Uh, keep bottle cap securely closed when not in use. Uh, inspect the bag and gloves thoroughly before use. Inspect the bag. Does it tell me how to inspect the bag? I don't know. Uh, retain leaflet. Double check surface material before applying and refer to manufacturer's instructions. Test on an inconspicuous area prior to use. I'm supposed to leave it overnight, so I've got to test it on a bit and leave it overnight and then see if it... no. Um, <clears throat> suitable for use on most common stainless steel and enamel surfaces. Uh, protect surfaces thoroughly, blah 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 blah. Ventilate the room during and after use. Okay, I'll put the extractor fan on. Um, that'll play havoc with the microphone. Um, rinse and dry hands after use. Store solution at room temperature, out the reach of your open, blah blah blah. Okay. Um, do not use on any part of the hob, including the hob cooker. Well, that's what it's for, isn't it? An oven ring. Well, maybe that just means the top bit. Cooker, oven, I don't know. Uh, do not use on oven trim, glass oven door. Maybe, oh, wait, that must be the outside bit. So I've got to use it on the inside. I mean, that's part of the oven, isn't it? Um, pilot light or heating and fan elements. Do not use on a hot oven. Check. Uh, do not use on uh, or let the solution come into contact with the pilot light, door seals, trims, heating and fan elements. Basically, you can just use it on the oven and nothing else, literally nothing else. Not the handle, not the dials, not the clock. Don't get it on the floor, otherwise it'll burn a hole through to hell. Yes, well, that's enough of that. Um, I'll put the box out of the way. Actually, no, I'll put the box here just so that I can uh, refer to it whilst I'm talking to you. And um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Right then, chaps, so um, hopefully the, uh, the logistics of this aren't going to uh, muck up the video too much, but uh, basically the first step is to uh, place the racks in the bag and add half to three quarters of the solution into the bag. Now, that seems like quite a lot for me for what is essentially, you know, less than a third of the oven, the racks, but they want me to use three quarters of the solution in the bag with the racks, which isn't going to leave much for the oven itself, but, um, you know, maybe they, they obviously know best. So. Um, We'll, uh, we'll take those out. I just need to um, put my gloves on, I think, before I start handling. It's not the bleach that I'm concerned about, it's what's inside the oven. Um, so uh, here's our bags um, and some rather attractive clinical looking gloves. Um, I'm about to perform some sort of surgical operation. Um, this bag is actually huge. I thought this was two bags, but um, it's one bag. Um, it says uh, on the bag, caution corrosive product. It seems that the bag is corrosive as well. Handle with care. Ensure that all instructions and safety information on the box are read in full before using. Well, I've read most of it. Uh, danger of suffocation. Keep away from children. Yes, if they put their head inside and suffocate, they might even be corroded to death as well. Um, so yes, here we go. I think we uh, place the racks in the bag and then add the solution. Right, so we'll... We'll uh, get this open. You're probably not going to be able to see much of this, but um, you know I've got a very small kitchen, so I'm quite uh, restricted on how much I can film. Um, so we'll uh, take the racks out. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, blast! I've already got mucky. Um, hang on a second. Gloves. Right now, racks. Let's get the racks out. Doing this on the floor is quite difficult. Very noisy, which uh, probably means you're not going to be able to hear anything I'm saying. So uh, here are our racks. Now I'm not sure if you can see these on the camera, but they've uh, got a fair amount of uh, grub on them. Grub? They've got a fair amount of, you know, crap on them. So um, so apparently these both go into the bag, then we pull the solution in. So um, I'm going to do that. Let's just close the door for a second. Bloody hell. Um, get the bag open, which is quite difficult to do by itself. There we go. And uh, yeah, so we've got this massive bag and uh, the racks inside. So um, let's pop that there. Uh, and so we uh, we pour half. I'm going to use. It says half to three quarters. I think if I use three quarters, I'm not going to have much left for the um, uh, for the oven. So um, we'll we'll pour pour this in and uh, and see what happens. Which is probably nothing to begin with. Right. Let's. 
do this. Right. So half of the I mean, it doesn't smell particularly corrosive, but uh, we'll keep it at arms out. It says fume free, so I can sniff it until the cows come home, and I won't get high, which is kind of unfortunate, really, um, because that probably would make the uh, task of cleaning the oven much more interesting. If I were to start hallucinating, um, let's head inspect the bag. Done. Um, hopefully, it doesn't leak all over the floor. So half of this. Oh, it's very, it's very bleachy. It's very thick. Um, it's difficult to tell how much is half because the bottle isn't clear. Um, I reckon that's probably about half. A bit more for luck. There we go. Right. So that's half of that. Put that out of the way there. Uh, then what? It says um, seal the bag and fold around the racks. Then tilt the bag to coat the trays. Leave to soak for four hours, ideally overnight. So that's um, fairly straightforward. Let's. Um, do this. These things never work, do they? And the thing is, I'm concerned that if I get this top bit wrong, um, it's not going to uh, do what I want it to do, which is to you know, coat the bags. It, it might just all leak out. So um, I'm going to make sure that that's properly done. There we go. Right. It then says to. Uh, f oh, and the problem is, there's lots of air. There, so. Um, that's, that's not very good at all, is it? Right, let me pause and uh, I'm just going to see if I can sort out the air situation. Bear with me. Right then, Tap, so I've left the uh, the racks sort of brewing on top of the hob there, so I'll leave those overnight. Um, as it turns out, that amount of solution in, in a bag of that size isn't actually that much, which um, which actually means it's quite difficult to coat the, um, the racks. Now, um, <clears throat> the problem I had is that um, I had too much air inside the bag, and uh, it's quite difficult to close a bag that's full of racks and bleach uh, without getting too much air trapped inside. And of course, if there is too much air in, the bag isn't in contact with the racks, and so the solution doesn't really cover it. So I had to sort of manually agitate it inside the bag so that um, it got a, a fair covering. I'm sure there are bits that I've missed, and uh, you know, once they settle overnight, they may sort of get into all the nooks and crannies, but um, we'll see, uh, see the results in the morning. Um, so I think the next step is to um, just bang the rest of it in the, in the oven. It says, pour the remaining solution in the oven, carefully apply with a sponge, leave to soak for four hours, ideally overnight. So, um, we'll, uh, we'll give that a go. Was I not supposed to shut the door? Maybe not. More cleaning up needed, I think. Well then, chaps, uh, a word of warning. When, you, when you've when finished scrubbing, um, don't close the door, because it all runs out the bottom. Or at least it does in our oven, uh, which maybe means the seals aren't very good or whatever, or I've got bleach on it. Um, so, uh, yes, I've had to... There you go, that's my fiance texting me to say, have you cleaned the oven yet? Um, <clears throat> uh, so yes, I, I think I'll leave the door open so that um, we don't get anything else all, all over the floor. So um, I think the thing to do now would be to uh, settle in for the night and uh, come back and, and see it in the morning. So I'm going to go to bed, because I'm knackered now. Well, good morning, chaps. Um, 12 hours has uh, passed since I applied the solution uh, into the oven and um, uh, I came down this morning, uh, filled up a couple of bowls of soapy water and, um, and rinsed it out. And as it turns out, this stuff is bloody brilliant. Um, it, uh, everything comes out with ease and uh, leaves it absolutely spotless. So um, I'm always a bit sceptical of things that say cleans first time and unbeatable results, no scrubbing required. Uh, but actually that turned out to be completely true uh, because all you do is fill up the bowl 
uh, and wipe it out and it's um, it's clean and it's very good and uh, it looks uh, excellent so um, yes well recommended oven pride um, the uh, as for the racks uh, it's the same story really um, they are very sparkly uh, look as good as new and uh, all you do with those is you just take them out of the bag um, give them a rinse dry them off put them back in and uh, and then with the bag you um, pour some water in seal the bag slosh it about a bit cut one of the corners off and then you can pour all the dirty stuff down the sink um, and then you can just throw the bag away so it's all very efficient very good and um, I was pleasantly surprised I, I did think there was going to be some sort of elbow grease involved um, but actually it turns out that none is involved and that might be something to do with the fact that it um, contains sodium hydroxide which is in effect acid so um, there we are oven pride yes I'm, I'm proud of my oven my nice clean oven I say.